Hello, bonjour, dear wine enthusiasts, and welcome to your new wine video. So, the holiday season is upon us now, and you're on the market for a nice champagne to share with your family and friends, and you don't want to gamble on a small producer or a brand that you've never heard of. You want to go with a name everyone will recognize, everyone will be rather impressed with as well, and curious about. So you're thinking, why not go with the safest bet for one of the two most famous champagne brands, Moet and Chandon, or Veuve Clicquot. They're both owned by the same Louis Vuitton French luxury group. They're both extremely consistent and supposedly delicious in style, but which one is the best, or at least how are they different, or are they essentially pretty much the same champagne with different labels? I'm Julian Michel, a Bordeaux-trained French winemaker with 20 plus years of experience in the wine industry, making wine, tasting wine, importantly, and writing about wine from all around the world. So let's talk about those brands and taste them too. At the end of the video, I'll give you an incredible fact about champagne that really not many know about and that will surprise you for sure. I will score each of these bottles for you as well, so you know which one I would personally go for and maybe which one you should go for as well. Let's go! Those two champagnes are arguably the single most famous and popular of all champagne brands from France and they play in the same price category as well, the standard uh, Moët & Chandon, this one non-vintage called the Brut Imperial, averages at around $55 to $60 a bottle in the US, while Veuve Clicquot, their non-vintage called the Yellow Label, Yes, it's yellow or orangey. Carte jaune is uh, called in French. It's a little more expensive at around $65 to $70. So, is it justified uh, to invest a little more on Veuve, $10, $15 more, to drink Veuve rather than Moet? If we look at the two brands, well, they're somewhat similar in their marketing and material and their history. Moet was established in 1743 by Claude Moet, a wine trader at the time. His grandson, in particular Jean-Rémy Moet, is credited with championing champagne on a global scale. So a wonderful marketer. 90 years later, in 1832, Claude's great-grandson Victor Moet partnered with his brother-in-law Pierre-Gabriel Chandon de Briaille, merging the two families, hence now we have Moet and Chandon today. Vave Clicquot, on the other hand, was founded in 1772, so a little bit later, by Philippe Clicquot, a banker and textile merchant. In 1805, following the death of his son, Philippe's daughter-in-law, Barbe Nicole Ponsardin, took over the family business and saved it from near bankruptcy. She became known as Clicquot Widow or Veuve Clicquot in French, Veuve Clicquot Ponsardin for the full name. So, two different families essentially, and we looked at the history, it's interesting, both some of the oldest champagne houses, both pioneers of their time uh, at marketing champagne. Although the two brands are now, of course, both owned by the gigantic luxury group LVMH, who owns Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Hennessy and Cognac, and many more brands of luxury goods and champagne houses. Let's get opening these bottles, shall, shall we? In 
in terms of winemaking, we don't know a whole ton about how these two champagnes are made. They're both extremely large operations making millions of bottles each year. So they're sourcing grapes from many vineyards all across the Champagne region. Vav says they source from 50 to 60 different crews, so 50, 60 different villages or locations across Champagne, which is already quite a lot. Moet doesn't quite say or communicate how many crews uh, they buy grapes from, but I suspect it's in the hundreds since they made such big volumes of champagne. So maybe Vav is a little more selective. Maybe I'm speculating here since we don't know exactly and I'm trying to read through for you the official communications from the brands. Both of those champagnes are blends of the three champagne grapes, but Veuve has a little more uh, Pinot Noir. Veuve is 50% Pinot Noir against Moet that claims 30 to 40%. So they're a little bit more vague uh, at Moet. Veuve says 20% of uh, Pinot Meunier. Whoops, it's spilling. Vav says 20% of Pinot Meunier, while Moet says 30 to 40%. Chardonnay is similar at 30% for Vav and 20-30% for Moet. So Vav has a little more Pinot Noir, uh, it seems, while Moet has a little more Pinot Meunier. Both of the dosage or the added sugar uh, at bottling is the same at around 9 grams per liter. Vav claims 40% reserve wine in their blend, so wine that has been stored and matured for a few years at the winery prior to being used in the blend. Higher percentage of reserve wine is usually considered a bit better as the wines acquire a little more finesse and complexity for the few years they stored uh, at the winery in the tanks before bottling. So Verve 45% reserve wine while Moet claims 20 to 30%. It sounds like Verve has uh, an advantage here. 20% more reserve wine in the blend is quite significant. Finally, there's the bottle aging prior to release. You have to know that champagne wines are fermented in the bottles, the very bottle you buy them in, and then wineries lay them down for a few months so they refine and mature on the lees. You've got the dead lees at the bottom. The longer you leave the wine in contact with the lees, the yeasts essentially uh, the creamier a texture you get, the more yeasty, buttery and smoky flavors you extract as well. Verve say they age their champagne for three years, three full years, which is quite a long time. It's essentially the time most top champagnes are aged for, including some prestige cuvées. Mouet, on the other hand, doesn't communicate or for how long uh, they age those champagnes for because I think they apply the legal uh, requirement, the minimum for champagne, which is 18 months on lease. So about half the maturation time in the, mo in the bottle for Moet versus Veuve. So on paper, Veuve Clicquot has indeed a slight advantage against Moet and Chandon. As a wine connoisseur, when I look at the details that I found online about those two different brands, the, the details that we know about that are given by the brands, a few little things uh, tell me that Veuve is a little more handcrafted uh, than Moet, which would only make sense uh, since it's a little pricier and I believe they produce a little less volume of it as well. But the specifications on paper don't mean it's going to taste absolutely better. It doesn't mean one has got a, a style that some may enjoy uh, better than the other. There's the question of value for money as well, since Moet is a little bit uh, cheaper. For this, there's only one way to find out, which is tasting. Since this video is quite long already, probably approaching seven, eight, nine minutes, 
I'll give you my tasting verdict uh, next week in our next video. I don't want to make this video too long. If you're not part of the Bonner Private Wine Club yet and you're watching this video on YouTube, check out America's most unique wine club to get early access to our new videos each week and be able to taste receive at home delicious wines that we bring to the US from Europe and all around the world to our members just for them. As promised, here is the incredible fact about champagne. Because wineries have to age the champagne bottles for at least 18 months before release and some for 18 months, some for longer, as we've seen, at any given moment right now there is more than 1 billion bottles of champagnes lying down often underground in the wine cellars of champagne wineries, champagne houses. More than 1 billion bottles and it could even be closer to 2 billions right now underground in Champagne. Incredible, isn't it? Stay tuned to the channel for more wine learning and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine including next week for tasting those two beauties and telling you what I think about them, which one is best. See you soon.